Hi everyone, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a pattern called Fruitcake. This is a Cozy Quilt Designs pattern designed by Linda Allen, and it's a nice scrappy looking quilt. So if your eye catches it here, you can see a little secondary pattern. There's some little windmill shaped pieces here. And that fabric is the same one that's used on the inner border, but it's very subtle. And that's because of the fabric selection here. The accent just sort of blends in with all the rest of the prints. Now I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna use all contrasting fabrics. And then we're gonna see if we can get those windmills to just pop a little bit more. So this project takes layer cake squares. So for the size I'm making, I'm gonna need 37 layer cake squares. And most layer cakes come with 40 or 42 squares. So that works out well if you're using a different layer cake at home. Now this is a whole group of blues. They're kind of medium blues, light blues, creams. This is a collection and it's from Riley Blake and it's called Tranquility. This is a set that my husband Matt cut. And all of these prints, they're going to be the background that's gonna surround all of the windmills. And my accent, which are those windmills, that's all gonna be cut from this dark blue. This is a grunge, so grunge has a couple different colors, a little blend of colors in it. Now the first thing we're gonna do is cut up the layer cake squares. We're gonna separate them into three stacks. We need 15 in one stack, we need 14 in one stack, and we need eight in one stack. And it doesn't really matter which colors are where, just mix them all up. Once you have a nice variety of colors in each stack, we're gonna set this stack of 14 aside because it's gonna be used later in the patchwork border. And then the 15 and the eight, these are both gonna get subcut. I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but I've made so many cozy quilt patterns and they're very easy to follow. I'm also going to go ahead and get the accent pieces all cut. So this is all we need to do all of the patchwork. Now all we have to do is take one of each size, one big print, one different little print, and one accent, and head to the machine. So there's no special stitching, we're just gonna sew them side by side. So this is the order they go in, just like that. And they're all the same length, so I'm gonna put these two right sides together, line them up carefully, and just use a quarter inch seam all the way down here. And then I'm going to finger press this seam allowance and I'm gonna press it towards this smaller piece. So I'm just kind of pulling it open and then drawing my fingernail or the pad of my finger right down there. And that holds it in place till we can iron it. Now this piece is gonna go here. Again, they're exactly the same length. This is pretty simple sewing. I just like to hold it at the top and hold it at the bottom. stitch all the way down, and again, finger press it, same direction. These are also pretty easy to iron. We did finger press it, so it's pretty flat, and I like to use a dry iron and make sure that I can feel the seam allowances are all facing the same way, then a little steam. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up all of my blocks just like that. Once these are all done, we are going to cut all of these. We're going to cut them in half. So I'm going to, I'm gonna line this up on my cutting board here, and we're gonna go right down the middle, and I'm gonna cut them one at a time. Now we're gonna take all of our half blocks back to the machine, and I'm gonna get two of them, two that have different fabrics, 
These two right here would be good. And we're gonna take them and we're gonna spin one around. And we're gonna make sure that we have an accent on the top right and the bottom left. And then we're gonna stitch it right here. Now, because we ironed all our seam allowances toward the accent fabric, when we put these two together, those seam allowances are going in opposite directions and they're gonna nest, making it really easy to match that intersection. So that's the only spot that has to be matched. These blocks are really very easy to stitch up. And we're going to finger press this seam to the right and I'm gonna use this exact same procedure to take all these other halves and make them into blocks. Now we wanna iron these blocks, smooth them out a little bit, a little dry iron, some steam, and it's done. We're ready to lay the blocks out now. There's 30 blocks. They only get laid two different ways. So the first one will be like that, and the next one will just be turned 90 degrees. Then another one like that, and then another one turned. So there's going to be five in each row, and I'm gonna have six rows going up. All the blocks are laid out, and you can really see those windmills start to pop out now. I haven't traded any of the blocks around, I'm gonna to need to do that a little bit, because you can see right here, we've got a whole bunch of the same color in one spot. So you can take a block and put it completely upside down and that might solve the problem or you can trade it with another block. So anytime you see a lot of one color, like there's a lot of that white way up in that far corner, those would be some blocks that I would trade around. But other than that, I think the quilt is looking really good. Now remember those squares we set aside earlier for the feast border? All we're going to do is split each one of these in half. Now we're going to stitch them together on their short edges into one really long piece. So I'm not going to worry about what order they're in. I'm just going to make sure I don't get the same print right next to itself. Just stitch that short seam there and finger press all of the seams in one direction. Just keep grabbing pieces until you have them all stitched together into one really long pieced border. So we're going to put a accent border around the quilt first. So this is going to go around all four sides. Then we're gonna take this pieced border and it's gonna go on the outside of that. So I'm gonna go ahead, get all this stitched together and get it onto the quilting machine. I've got the fruitcake quilt on the machine. There's really only three color choices for thread here that we can use. We can use navy blue, and that is going to blend right in to the windmills, but it's gonna show some in the light areas, which is okay. We've got a nice gray here. Now that's gonna show a little more in the windmills, but I think it's gonna blend in in all the patchwork. Or we can go with this medium slate blue. And I think this is what I'm gonna use. Yeah, it, it doesn't show up much in the windmills. It doesn't show up much at all in the patchwork. It'll show up a little bit there, but not too much. So that's what we'll go with. For the quilting pattern, I've chosen soft and sweet. It has nice roses in it, and there are roses in a lot of the Tranquility prints. Also, there's these little hearts, which I think will look really nice mixed in with the flowers.
Now that the quilt is all done, you can see that those windmills are showing up a little more prominently in this version. It's still nice and scrappy looking, but with the strong contrast between the dark and the lights, they just show up a little bit more. The quilt turned out 58 by 67, so it's a nice throw size. And of course the pattern has baby, throw, twin, and queen size. The quilting on it, it does show up quite nicely in these dark areas here. I really like how it gives it some dimension in that almost solid grunge. And I do like having that border over here in the grunge and the pieced border, that looks really good. Now I've got the striped print. This is a striped floral for the binding and it matches, coordinates with the back. Again, you can't see the quilting very much on the back there, but we've got the swirls and the flowers. Now this is one of the fastest quilts I've ever made. This is a true beginner quilt. It doesn't look like a beginner quilt when it's done, but it was very, very fast to make. Now I had one more thing I wanted to share with you. I had some panels in the Tranquility collection, so I made a couple of pillows to match the quilt. And we do have a tutorial to show you how to make ruffled pillows, and they don't have to be panels. If you just have extra fabrics from your quilt making, it's always nice to make some accessories, and ruffled pillows are a very easy way to make something that coordinates. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer. Now we're going to have another giveaway. This quilt is called Trade Winds and it's made in these nice Robert Kaufman prints called Bright Side. And it's very easy to enter our giveaways. All you have to do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway. And you put in your name and your email address. And remember, we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.